Hey guys, it's Michael here from FlySight. In this video, I want to talk about evaluating performance records. Now, when I talk about performance records, I'm talking about things like maximum exit altitude, maximum time of fall, distance of fall, and distance of flight. When we're judging these records, one of the hardest parts is identifying the exit and the opening. There are three tools we can use to do this, and we'll look at all three of them in this video. First one is change in altitude. We also have a change in speed. And finally, we have a change in the aerodynamics. Let's take a look at a skydive. The first thing I want to point out is the overall shape of this plot. So we start with the plane on the ground, and then we have the climb to altitude, jump run, free fall, canopy time, and then the jumper is landed. Let's zoom in roughly to the exit. So I'll hit the Z key and we'll zoom in. Now we can see immediately why change in elevation isn't really that useful. Uh, in this case, the elevation starts dropping much too gradually for us to pick a definitive exit point. Let's take a look at the horizontal and vertical speed. So I'll hit the H and the V key. For low speed exits, an increase in vertical speed is the most obvious way to pick the exit. And that would include things like balloon jumps and base jumps. For high speed exits, like this one, the most obvious way to pick the exit is with a decrease in horizontal speed. When we're picking the exit, it's helpful to start from the left side of the plot and work toward the right. So on the left side here, we're in the aircraft, and what we're looking for is a sudden drop in horizontal speed at the same time as an increase in vertical speed. In this case, that happens right here. So to mark the exit, I'm going to hit the X key, and then I'm going to click in the plot. And you can see that the bottom axis, uh, the time, has changed to zero exactly where I clicked. Next, let's look at the opening. So I'll zoom out. Then I'll hit the Z key, and I'll zoom in roughly to opening altitude. Now when we talk about the opening, it's important to talk about what defines the opening. So it could be when the jumper throws the pilot chute, it could be when the canopy becomes landable, or it could be when the canopy becomes fully inflated and flying. The other thing we can talk about is the deployment process. So at the start of deployment, the pilot chute is thrown, the canopy gets extracted from the bag, it reaches line stretch, and pauses at the top with the slider up. And then the slider comes down, the canopy inflates fully, and the jumper slows down much more. I prefer to mark opening as the moment when the canopy becomes landable. We can think of this as happening at about 10 meters per second vertical speed, which is 36 kilometers an hour. And this usually coincides with that pause where the canopy is sitting at line stretch, but the slider has not yet come down. Let's see what that looks like in this example. So when we're identifying opening, it's helpful to start from the left and from the right. So in this case, on the left side, we see that speeds are quite high. And that means the jumper must be in free fall. And on the right side, the speeds are low and they're staying low, which means you must be under canopy. Somewhere in the middle, we must have opening. So the first thing I look for is a sudden drop in horizontal and vertical speed. Now it's important that we include horizontal speed in this because for example, a wingsuit can flare to reduce their vertical speed quite a bit, but they can only do that with quite a high horizontal speed. In this case, we see a really obvious drop in horizontal speed right here, and it coincides with a large drop in vertical speed as well. From here, we could pick that 10 meter per second threshold to get an exact opening point, and that would be right about here, where the jumper passes 36 kilometers an hour vertical speed. Now, if the opening isn't completely clear, we can also look at the lift and drag coefficients. I've done another video about that, so I'll put a link in here 
uh, for that video for anyone who isn't familiar with those two coefficients. Basically, what they do is they measure how efficiently forward speed is converted into lift and drag. And of course, a canopy does this much more efficiently than a jumper in freefall, even with a wingsuit. So what we can do is we can look for a large change in the lift and drag coefficients, and that might tell us when the canopy is deploying. So I'll hit the L key and the D key to show those two coefficients. And we can see right away that during freefall, the two coefficients stay quite low. And then right about the time that we identified as opening, we see a large jump in the two. Now in some cases, especially if we have high winds, uh, both the speed and the lift and the drag coefficients may not be really clear. In those cases, we can actually subtract the effect of the wind in order to better be able to pick out the opening. Now again, I've done another video on subtracting the effect of wind, and I'll put a link to that here for anyone who hasn't seen it. But briefly, what we can do is we can zoom out, hit the Z key to zoom into the climb to altitude. And now we want to show the wind view. Mine is showing in the bottom right here, but if you haven't already got it, you can click on the window menu and click wind view. Now in the wind view, what we should see is our gray data in the background and then a red circle that fits that quite well. I'll click the save button and this will save the wind parameters down in the bottom right. Now we can zoom out. I'll hit the Z key and zoom into free fall again. And then I can hit the W key to adjust for wind. And if we zoom into opening, we can see a little more clearly what's happening here. So the horizontal and vertical speed drop. And at the same time, there's a small spike in the lift and drag coefficients. And that's when the canopy comes out and it's sitting up at line stretch. And then we have a bit of a delay while the canopy stays at line stretch. And then suddenly the slider comes down and our lift and drag coefficients get much bigger. So once again, this confirms for us that if we choose that 36 kilometer an hour vertical speed, we're pretty close to the time when the canopy has actually hit line stretch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that 36 kilometer per hour threshold and we'll make a note of the exact time when that happens. So I move my cursor around. I can zoom in a little bit here. And in the tooltip here, I see that my vertical speed is 36 kilometers an hour, and the time is 77.9886 seconds. Now that we've identified the opening, we can actually get some performance measurements. The first thing you want to do is show the scoring view. So mine is already showing on the left here, but if yours isn't, go to the window menu and choose scoring. We already know that the exit, the start time, is at zero seconds because that's where we marked it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to enter the end time that we found, and that was 77.9886 seconds. I'm going to turn off wind adjustment by hitting W. I'm also going to turn off the lift and drag coefficients and the horizontal and vertical speed. Now if we zoom out, we can see that in the plot, the jump itself is bracketed by these gray regions. So the jump is white. This is a, a good sanity check to make sure that we've chosen the right exit and opening. And finally, if we look over on the left in the scoring view, we can see that the time of fall is 77.9889 seconds. The total distance of fall is 2,779 meters, and the total distance of flight is 3,752 meters. And if we need it, we can see that the exit altitude is 3,929 meters, and that is above mean sea level. That's about it. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions, 
please feel free to leave them in the comments.